Why did Swami Vivekanand, one of the greatest preachers of Vedanta philosophy since the time of Shankaracharya, die so young? Just like Shankaracharya, Swami Vivekanand too did not live long and left his physical body at the early age of 39. Now even though Swamiji, as he was called, suffered from many ailments such as diabetes and asthma, nevertheless on the day of his passing he was actually in good health and in a jovial mood during breakfast. So what caused him to die so young? Actually, behind the passing of every evolved soul such as Swami Vivekananda, there is a greater spiritual reality hidden which we ordinarily do not grasp. But luckily for us, Swamiji himself revealed the truth in great detail. About six years before his passing, sometime in August of 1896, Vivekananda confided to his brother disciple Swami Abhedanand that he was going to live only for five or six years more at most. How accurate was this prediction? For Swami Vivekanand passed away six years hence on July 4th, 1902. When Swami Abhedanand protested, saying a young man like him should not think of death, Vivekanand replied, You do not understand. My soul is getting bigger and bigger every day, so much so that the body can hardly contain it. Any day it may burst this cage of flesh and bone. Now what did Swamiji mean when he said that his soul was getting bigger? Here is the explanation. The soul is nothing but pure consciousness. So what Swami Vivekanand meant was that his consciousness was expanding so much beyond the realms of ordinary human consciousness to the domain of the superconscious that the body was proving an inadequate container and would soon have to be let go. To better understand this point, let us delve into Vedanta philosophy for just a few moments. According to Vedanta philosophy, consciousness is a field which exists separate from the body. This field of consciousness is a continuum, which means that it goes on endlessly in all directions like an infinite ocean. For the sake of simplicity, I will draw it as follows, the yellow bar representing the infinite field of consciousness. Now our individual souls can be thought of as a portion of this continuous field of consciousness. Thus what we normally experience as human consciousness is only a small subsection of the infinite range of consciousness the vast majority of which lies beyond the realm of ordinary human experience. Here I would like to point out that many times what we call as paranormal or psychic phenomena fall in this zone. This is similar to light where we are able to see only a few frequencies out of the full spectrum but certain insects such as bees can pick out many more colors. Now Vedanta tells us that different living beings experience different portions of this one continuous spectrum of consciousness. Take for example the ant. Compared to us, it has significantly lower amounts of consciousness. An ant is not aware of the traffic jam outside, nor does it worry about picking the kids up from school. In other words, the soul of the ant is in a state of restricted consciousness or limited awareness about the world. Many things exist beyond its ant world of which it is completely unaware. Now let us say that the soul or consciousness of the ant expands so that it becomes aware of more things. Then Vedanta tells us that the soul of the ant will find the small body and brain of the ant as insufficient to express its greater consciousness and therefore it will manifest for its purposes a better body say that of a cat. So according to Vedanta this is how evolution happens. Underneath the chain of physical evolution of species is the spiritual reality of an expanding consciousness. This expansion of consciousness is the real engine which propels the entire train of biological evolution. Now in the evolutionary chain, you do not jump directly from an ant to a cat. Rather there are many small evolutionary steps in the middle, but this is just an example to demonstrate the idea. In fact in Hinduism, the soul is said to traverse through 8.4 million life forms before it attains to a human birth. But human beings too are not the final step in the evolutionary chain. In the case of human beings, our consciousness or our soul has gotten significantly bigger than that of animals but it is still restricted. In fact, still beyond the realms of ordinary human consciousness lies a specific state of superconsciousness where our soul has become so enlarged that it has become infinite. In other words, from being a little portion of the ocean of consciousness, it has become the whole. This state, where the soul has become one with the infinite ocean of consciousness, also known as universal consciousness or God, this state of the soul is called by different names in different religions. In Hinduism it is called Samadhi, in Buddhism enlightenment and in Christianity salvation. The names may be different but they all mean the same thing and that is freedom or liberation from the evolutionary cycle of birth and death. 
For in this ultimate state of superconscious samadhi, the soul is finally free. Its infinite consciousness can no longer be confined to the finite body and the body is let go. This state of samadhi was attained to by Swami Vivekanan, by his Guru Sri Ramakrishna, by Sri Aurobindo, by Ramna Maharishi and in our present times by my highest Guru Sri Ram Sharma Acharya. This state of superconscious enlightenment was also attained to by Jesus and by Buddha and this final state of freedom alone is the goal for all of us right down to the little ant. This brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you so much.